Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, or whatever you might be watching this. Welcome to worship. Um, we apologize that this has been uploaded the way it has. The church internet here just wasn't working, and uh, our folks worked very hard. We just couldn't get it going for the live stream. So we're recording this, and we are glad that you can participate and be part of it. A reminder that this is a communion worship, so since it's not live, if you want to just push the pause button and go get some bread and some wine, go for it. Go ahead. Uh, no problem. And, uh, you know, again, we are, we are sorry for this. Um, folks worked very hard. It just wasn't going to happen. We are working also to create a uh, drive-in worship experience, and we'll be having a dress rehearsal for that, and we might be able to launch that next week on the 29th, maybe December 6th. We're not sure with the way things are going. Who knows? But uh, we're trying, and we'll let you know, so please keep up with your emails and keep watching on the church Facebook page to be kept up to date with that. Right now, despite all the stress and the strain and all the stuff that's happened, we're going to worship God. And we're going to start that with the thanksgiving for baptism. I invite you, if you wish, to please rise and join me in it. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God. From the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join in the gathering hymn.
Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you're not already, I invite you to be seated for the readings. First reading is from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. 
I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing the psalm. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. 
For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? And he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteousness into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you're not already, I invite you to be seated for the sermon. If you've been around here a little while, you know that I'm a history nerd. I love history stuff. And Netflix knows it too. So when I go on to Netflix, Netflix is always showing me all these different history things, right? Some documentaries and some kind of historical fiction, right? Shows that take place in the past or that were based on real life. And so, sure enough, just a little while ago, a show popped up on my Netflix that I had not ever even heard of. It's called Nightfall. Nightfall, but it's spelled with a K, K-N-I-G-H-T, Fall. And it is about the fall of the Knights Templar. See, it's a clever name. i got to give him credit for that. Um, so, being a history nerd, right, I'm a sucker for this kind of thing, I watched it. And, um, and i I, I got to be honest with you. Nightfall is a terrible show. It is just awful. I don't know how it is that I managed to suffer through uh, a whole season of that show. But the second season, I was just like, nope. Forget it. I mean, it is terrible. The acting is bad. The costumes are bad. Like, they're all, it's the Middle Ages, okay? The Knights Templar were founded about the year 1200 during the time of the Crusades. It's the Middle Ages, they're all wearing, like, these white things, and they're always white. And it's like, it's the Middle Ages. You know, people would be dirty, and everybody's got, you know, like, like nice hair, and, you know, and, and the, the writing is bad. Like, that's inexcusable. You know, the writing was terrible. You know how, like, Maybe you don't know, because maybe you don't watch historical shows. But when I watch historical shows, like, I'll watch it, and something will happen, and I'll be like, that can't be right. And I'll go look it up. And, and sometimes it is. I don't know if you saw Chernobyl on HBO. That show is fantastic. It's an amazing show. It's worth a, a month's subscription of HBO just to watch it. I'm serious. It was so good. And stuff would happen in that show, and I'd be like, that, that can't be real. And I'd go look it up, and it would be real. And I'd be like, wow, that's really cool. Well, stuff would happen in Nightfall, and I'd look it up, and I'd be like, because I'm like, that can't be real, and I'd find out, actually, that that is true. It is not, in fact, real. Um, it was just so bad. But I did learn, accidentally, which is kind of the best way to learn history, I think, because uh, if you just read a bunch of history books, you end up taking a lot of naps, which is not a bad thing, but you don't learn history. Um, so accidentally is kind of the best way to learn history, I think. And so I accidentally learned a lot about the Knights Templar. Uh, their actual name, this is amazing. Um, I, you know, part of why I like history so much is because you can't make stuff up that's as good as history, right? If you were founding uh, an order of knights, the Knights Templar is a pretty good name, right? It wasn't their actual name. It's not what people called them. Or that's what people called them. It's not their actual name. Their actual name is the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon. Like, you can't make this up. Like, you'd never make this up. If, you, if I made this up and told you this would be a made-up name for a made-up order of knights, you'd be like, that's really stupid. Do, do better. Poor fellow soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon. I mean, you can't make it up. They, they were, in fact, poor fellow soldiers of Christ. <clears throat> the Knights Templar got started in around the year 1200 for a very noble cause. What, was, what had happened was that the Crusades had started, which, not necessarily a noble cause, okay, and a Christian European kingdom had been set up in Jerusalem and in the Holy Land. And so what happened was people started moving from Europe to there, right? They would move from France or Germany or Spain or wherever, and they would start moving to um, you know, to, to the Holy Land, to live, to settle there, or to just travel and visit the holy sites. 
Well, I don't know how good your European and Middle Eastern map knowledge is, but France to Jerusalem is a walk. And it would take a long time. And so people would bring stuff and they would bring money. And then people would rob them because these people have stuff and money. So the poor fellow soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon were originally formed to protect these travelers. That's why, that's why they were formed. They were formed to protect these travelers. It's a very noble cause. And they figured out, like, pretty soon, that what would make them even safer is if they had houses that they could stop at along the way, right? And so they, they did some fundraisers, and they bought these, these houses so that every night you'd have a safe place to stop. It's a noble cause. And then they figured out that, that the reason that these people were getting robbed in the first place is because they had stuff. So they came up with something that was, that was ingenious, really. And 12, you think about this happening in 1200. It's amazing. Well, what would happen is, at the start of your journey, you could give the Templars your money and sell your stuff and give them money for that. And then the Templars would give you a piece of paper. And you take that piece of paper with you on your journey to Jerusalem, and at the end of your journey, you would give that same piece of paper to the Templars, and they would give you all that money minus a small transaction fee. So what they did, basically, is they invented modern banking. And, I mean, really, think about it, 1200, in the year 1200, they invented the ATM. All for a very noble cause, right? All of it was for a noble cause. Well, what they, what they figured out was that it would be easier and better to protect people along the way if they had, you know, armor and swords, and if they got training. And the result of that was that they became the best Christian military force in the Holy Land. And they fought in all kinds of battles. They figured out that what's better than having houses kind of scattered along the way is that if you had castles, right? I mean, castles are safer than houses. So they built castles all along the way. And since they had this stuff, they built castles in Portugal and France and other places. And they started getting castles everywhere. And then they had all this money that they had made from the, uh, the, the small, right, the small convenience fee, convenience charge for all this banking. Then they had all this money. And so they figured that they could make loans to kings and popes which meant that they were now moving in high circles in society, which meant that they had access and influence, so they could talk to popes and kings and ask them to do things on behalf of the people that they were called to serve. All of this for very noble causes. And by any standard, right, that, that, that one might set of the world, they had made it by that point. I mean, they had made it, right? They, uh, they had this... this awesome military. They had castles everywhere, right? They had, uh, they had influence. They, they, were in, they, were, they were in the ear of kings and popes, and they could get stuff done. I mean, by, by every standard of the world, they were, they were a success. A huge, huge, massive success. And if we were to have similar things, I think that Holy Cross, we would, we would call ourselves a success, right? I mean, imagine if we had six, eight, ten campuses. You know, I mean, that would be a success, right? And, and if we had so many that we had security guards, right? I mean, that security guards in the parking lot to make sure that everything went well. That would, that would be success, right? I mean, we've had that many people in that many places, of course we'd be successful. And imagine if we had the ear of legislators, the governor, maybe even people in Congress or the president, that they would listen to us and, and call our leaders to go to prayer breakfasts and, and give them advice. I mean, wouldn't that be success? Right? That would be a huge success, wouldn't it? Of course it would. Of course it would. Well, are we succeeding now? It's an interesting question. If I had gone to you a year ago and said, I'm going to give you a scenario. Tell me how the church is doing. Right? 
If I said, here's a scenario, you just tell me how you think the church is doing. Here's the scenario. The scenario is that nobody has worshipped in the Holy Cross sanctuary for eight months. How's the church doing? What you would say is the church was dead. Dead. We were not a success. No way we were a success that was the case. Eight months of not worshipping in the sanctuary? Dead. That's what you would have said a year ago. That's what any of us would have said. We had thought about that eight months, no worship in the sanctuary, dead. And by the standards of this world, perhaps we are. By the standards of this world, by the standards that the Knights Templar, yeah, yeah, we, we probably are dead. But today is Christ the King Sunday. And so if Christ is our King, then it is Christ who determines what success is, right? It is Christ who decides what it means to be successful. And I don't know if you heard that list that he just read, or that I just read, but he didn't mention anything about multiple campuses, or security guards, or armed knights, or banking, or influence. He didn't say anything about that. When he was separating the sheets from the goats, none of that was part of it. He said, I, if I was sick, did you take care of me? If I was thirsty, did you give me water? If I was hungry, did you give me food? If I was naked, did you clothe me? That is the standard that Jesus sets. And that's how he separates people, right? And the people who succeeded are the ones who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, cared for the sick, and the ones who didn't succeed are the ones who didn't feed the hungry, didn't clothe the naked, didn't care for the sick. That's the standard for success that Jesus sets. And by that standard, Holy Cross has not just survived during this pandemic. Holy Cross has grown. As I was preparing for this sermon, I was trying to keep in my head all of the different service ministries that we've added, and I know I'm going to forget some with this list. I know it, because there's just too many that we've added, and none of them have stopped. We haven't stopped any of the programs that we had to help people outside of our walls. None of them have stopped, not one. Folks have found a way. They found a way. We added a mask ministry where we made hundreds of masks for people. We, we provided furnishing for an entire home of refugees. Our members rallied, and, and, and a small group of them raised like $5,700 between them and their friends. Just, just by personally asking. We didn't do a big appeal. Just, they just got the money. We've, we added a Genesis Hope ministry. We've, we've increased our connection with Micah 6. We've added all this stuff and all the things that we normally do, the holiday stuff, that's going to happen too. We've grown in this time. By the standards of this world, okay, we're dead. But by the standards of Christ, we're stronger than maybe ever. Maybe ever. And oh, by the way, we've actually added some members. Not a ton. A couple. We've added folks who said, oh, I see what they're doing. I want to be part of that. By the standards of this world, we're dead, man. But we don't worship this world. We worship Christ, the King. And by His standards, we are a huge success. Now, you might be wondering what happened to the Knights Templar. Uh, what happened to the Knights Templar, the reason the show is called Nightfall, is because they loaned a whole bunch of money to the King of France. And the King of France decided that rather than repay it, he would just do some funny business and get them all branded as heretics and excommunicated and burn a bunch of them at the stake. And then he didn't have to repay them. True story. That part's true. You can go look it up. By the standards of this world, they came crashing down. And by the standards of this world, maybe we're not a success if you look around this room. But by the standards of Christ the King, we have done awesome. And I am proud of you and proud of this church. And as this lockdown and this quarantine and all this stuff happens, 
Give thanks for that. This week, that's what I'm giving thanks for. I'm giving thanks that we are honoring Christ the King the way he wants us to. And yes, we will get together again, and we will have worship, and it'll be great. But let's not forget when that happens, the standard that Jesus sets. When people are hungry, we feed them. When they're naked, we clothe them. When they're thirsty, we give them something to drink. When they're sick, we take care of them. That is the standard of our King. Well done, Holy Cross. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the hymn. Together by saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. I invite you to remain standing if you wish, or be seated for prayer. Sovereign of all, Train our ears to hear your cries in the needs of those around us. Bless all our efforts to serve our neighbors, 
especially our non-food pantry, Micah 6, Genesis Hope, and our Christmas wish tree. We pray for the ministry of Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people. We pray for a vaccine for the coronavirus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages, including in our country and our election process. End divisions among people and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us. Help truth to reign. Restore our capacity to see everyone as fellow children of God. We pray for those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, especially Linda Ashby, Michael Asher, Alexis Carr, Renee Foster, Mike Hefner, Rebecca Hopkins, Doris Johnson, Sherry McGuffin, Kim Mott, Terry Racklin, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Pour out the gifts of your Spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Thank you for saints now departed who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended the sick. Inspire us by their example that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, will you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share Christ's peace with those in your midst. Peace, guys. And as we prepare for the offering, a reminder that it's not too late to submit your intent to give cards for 2021. And if we reach 150 given, we'll get an extra $4,000. So please submit those and please join in singing the offering song. Let us pray together. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to, help of, to the help of all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, 
We praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, receive nourishment for your journey. I invite you to share communion now with those in your midst using the words on the screen or as I say the words for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. 
May God, who breathed life into creation, be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to your dreaming. And may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. Amen. Go, full of the Holy Spirit, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christ Jesus.